They've got a church family in Mount Lake Terrace called Calvary Fellowship. They've got three adorable kids, and now they're here to talk about their newest adventure. Pastor Riley and Brittany Taylor, welcome to Spirit 105.3. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Okay, I love your family, and I'm so happy that you all have brought a brand new children's book into the world. Riley, what inspired you to write I Pray You Pray? I actually wrote it for our kids because we do family worship every single night. And ever since our oldest was like four. And so we want to teach them how to pray. But we noticed that, like all of us, learning how to pray doesn't always come naturally. The disciples right. asked Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? They wanted to know how to pray, especially our youngest had a hard time praying out loud and learning how to pray. So I woke up one day and I just like jotted down this poem, this idea that came to me in the night. It's one of those things, you know how you go to bed with a great idea? Yes. And you hope that you wake up <laughs> yeah. with the idea. Well, it yeah. happened. First. <laughs> time in my life. So I woke up and I just wrote it. And I, I first was just reading it to our kids and then teaching them how to pray, taking a lot of influence from the Psalms, the prayers of Jesus, yes. the prayers of Paul, and all the different kinds of prayer and just putting it in a way that teaches kids how to pray. And they love it. I love that you said that sometimes it's hard for people, no matter how old they are, to pray. And that even the disciples asked. That makes me feel better. Brittany, what is something that has helped you on your prayer journey? We do the Lord's Prayer, and it's very repetitive, and it's in our routine every morning. And I think that those prayers, even teaching kids those and adults, even for me, starting my morning off with that prayer just inspires me throughout my day yes. to just lean into Jesus more. And Jesus, if we look at how he prayed, it was very simple. And I think even simple prayers mm -hmm. are a really good foundation for kids and for adults. I love that. I think that repetitive prayers like the Psalms or the Lord's Prayer help us when we don't know the words. Some of us have been taught to be constantly authentic yeah. and to always speak from our heart. And that's a beautiful thing. But what if your heart doesn't have words mm -hmm. like mine often doesn't? Well, that's why God gave us certain prayers in the Psalms and in the Lord's Prayer and other prayers to give us words when we don't have them. Mm -hmm. And so the written down things gets us in the rhythm, which then helps us be authentic when it's time to overflow with grief or praise or joy or gratitude or fear or whatever. Absolutely. I feel so often when we have the words, sometimes they can be angry or we don't understand. Would you address that, Riley, as a pastor? Because I feel like sometimes people are afraid to let God know how they really feel. And I think he's tough enough to take it and he cares enough. When when I read hear. the Psalms, mm. especially Psalm 109, it's a prayer of mm. hatred. Ooh. And C.S. Lewis said that it was bad. He was like, we should not pray this prayer in his book on the Psalms. And I disagree. I think God can handle it. In fact, I think David prayed it to God because he knew God is the only one who can handle that kind of vitriol and mm -hmm. anger and anxiety spoken out loud. What we teach our kids is that there are five kinds of prayers. Wow, I'm sorry, ugh, thank you, and please. And it's the ugh one that they have the hardest time with, that we all have the hardest time with. And so we teach the kids, okay, time to pray an ugh prayer and just ugh, I'm sick. Amen. Yes, I <laughs> and love the kid, that. The kids, they go, that's not a prayer. That's not prayer. I go, yes, it is. Yes, he hears, he understands, and he cares about us. Brittany, has prayer become more natural in your family? Like something good happens and you go, thank you, Lord. Like talk about those kind of prayers that you've seen your kids pray. Yes, prayer has become pretty much part of all of our daily routine. It's not just family worship time or our morning time. It's part of us discipling our children. It's incorporated in everything we do. When our kids have a bad day at school, we go to prayer. Lord, help us to do better tomorrow. If they fail a test, yes. if they're anxious, if they're just struggling with friendships, we go to prayer in everything that we do with our kids. And we're really just trying to teach them that that's that closeness that they can have with Jesus and that he hears he hears our prayers yes. and he loves us and he he loves talking to us it's just talking to your father and we yes. always tell them that sometimes you don't have the exact 
words to say, but our father, he doesn't care how you say it. He just wants to hear from you. And I think that's why um, we're so excited about this book is because it's such a great tool for parents, educators, caregivers, whoever, just to have that easy foundation for teaching kids how to pray. Yeah. And after everything we've talked about so far, it might be good for me too. Yes. You know, adults like, too. Going back to prayer 101, because like what you're describing to me is just taking God's hand. You ever feel like that? You're scared. You're mm-hmm. upset. Something you just grab his and you know, he's there. He has been with me during some of the darkest moments of my life, you know, or even when you're on a plane and you're like, okay, that was really, that was some turbulence. Is this it? You know, and you know, you can feel him, you know, he's there. And I think prayer is that connection. It just Mm -hmm. connects our hands and our hearts together. And it's beautiful. I think that that definition of prayer is transformative. And if we all believe that, yeah. like you just said, Erica, it would change our lives. Mm-hmm. Too often prayer is that kind of classic vending machine in the sky. Let yes. me pray for this, this, and this. Yeah. God wants to hear that. Yeah. It says, give us this day our daily bread. Your father knows what you need before you even ask him. That's an invitation to bring your needs to God. But it's more than that. It's also experiencing his presence. Yes. And Ronald Rawheiser says it's mm. lifting mind and heart to God. Very simple. Mm. And it's acknowledging that he's with you. It's enduring your day or walking through sickness or experiencing difficulty with him. That's Mm -hmm. what prayer is. And I always feel a peace after I pray. No matter, even if I'm like in a good mood, it's like, wow, that's right. God's here and I can live like that and walk it out because there's so much going on and we're so busy. Let's talk about that too. Finding time. You know, we're talking about natural times to pray. It's just part of our lives. But is it also good to set aside a time to I go think to it's, God in prayer? I think it's key. We don't realize how the people in Jesus's day, traditional Jewish custom yeah. was to pray three times a day and they would pray the Shema, Deuteronomy 6. Yes. And part of that rhythm, what Paul called unceasing prayer, was that it forced you to pray at specific times, Mm -hmm. not to replace authentic off-the-cuff prayer, but to encourage it more often. See, it's when we create a structure that we can then decorate that structure. Think of it like a trellis Mm -hmm. that gives life to a vine. We need to have set-aside times. So in our family, we do family worship every night, and then we do family prayer before we head out the door every morning. So good. And those two times of prayer have created a rhythm. And then around that rhythm, you can decorate it with ornaments of authentic prayer whenever you are feeling a certain way. That's beautiful. Brittany, what is family worship night? What does that look like for you? So family worship night for us, it has kind of progressed over the years with our kids getting older. And so now it looks like us all gathered in the living room. Riley has been teaching the kids hymns. So we sing three or four hymns every night and we introduce new ones as they get older we want to make a hymn book actually Ooh, of all our next songs one. yeah and then we so we <laughs> sing songs uh, we sing hymns together and then we read the bible read the word and then we all go around and we pray those prayers that Riley just said wow thank you ug please <laughs> and we all just go around and we pray together and we just lift all those things up to the lord and that's it what a way to go to sleep it is when there's a busy night and we're not able to do family worship yeah it just throws them off. They look forward to it yep. every night. They love it. It's Aww. been such a great thing to include in our families. And we really recommend it. When we talk to families, we really tell them how important we think family worship is a family time at night to just gather together and end the night that way. What if you can't sing? I don't sing. I really don't. I really can't. I really can't <laughs> sing. And really? Riley tells me I have to sing. <laughs> I have a horrible voice and I ha- I'm married to somebody who has an amazing voice. So then I'm like really embarrassed. But... I gave birth to somebody like that. Oh, and I'm like, yes, I, I can't know. Carry a tune Hannah has an amazing it. voice. Well, thanks. And that sometimes hard. she will play at night and yeah. I'll hear her just from her room. And it is the most soothing thing. Worship oh. is medicinal. It can is. we just say that? It is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, have her break out the ukulele yes. and do family worship every night. Mm-hmm. I would love that. Our schedules are all so different, but every once in a while it happens, and it's just, it's beautiful. I love it so much. So could we turn a little bit, and can I ask you about the times we're living in? I don't have to say the words. You already know them. Inflation, recession, politics, all of the things that have people just tied up in knots right now. How would you calm a weary heart as a pastor? The way I see it in the Psalms, I think of Psalm 131. In Psalm 131, David says, I have not lifted my heart to think about things that are too big for me. Mm. 
And then he goes on to say, like a child with its mother Mm -hmm. is my soul in your presence. What David is doing there is not, he's not praying his anxiety away. He's not getting around his anxiety about his life or his responsibilities or his difficulties. He's actually praying through it. So I would encourage people, don't pray it away, pray through it. Let God lead you through it like a child with its mother. And that what David is is acknowledging is that there are some things that are too big for me to worry about. Yeah. I can't control the war in Ukraine. I can't control the right. interest rates. I can't control the political turmoil. I can't control my family arguing over Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. I can't control that. So I have not lifted my heart to those things that are too big for me. Instead, I'm going to entrust everything into the presence of God, a caring father who loves me and who will walk me through this like a child with its mother. That's beautiful. Brittany, I want to ask you as a mom, you know, we had a shooting in Seattle. Mm -hmm. There was a teenager who, you know, his life was taken. Mm -hmm. And there have been a lot of school incidents. When you get those notifications on your phone, they really shake up your heart. So Brittany, how do you cover your children in prayer as a mom? Yeah, I am somebody who tends to be a worrier and an anxious person. So even (laughs) just last year with the other shooting in Texas, I tend to just kind of develop anxiety around dropping my kids off at school every morning. And so for me, what I have to do is I have to remember that these kids are kids that the Lord has given me, that he has them first and that he knows them. He knows them by name and that I just have to pray for protection over my children, over the school, over all surrounding that and give it to the Lord because I would be a worrying mess. And I, I can't keep my kids at home all day long and not let them out. I have to trust the Lord that he has them and that he loves them and he knows them and that he um, is going to protect them. And just releasing that worry and that anxiety. It's just a scary time to be in school. And so just praying for that, praying for also just the nation and for people to know Mm -hmm. Jesus, because that's really what it comes down to is that people need to know who the Lord is. And so just praying for that and and having my kids join in on that and praying for that as well Mm -hmm. um, gives me peace. Riley, as we conclude here, I love the word. I was just reading this the other day. It says, he himself is our peace. Jesus is our peace. For somebody who doesn't feel peace right now, especially, maybe it's because it's the busyness of the Christmas season, or it's because they don't know him yet. How would you encourage them today? Firstly, I would tell them to do what I I say to my oldest. I'd say, let's take a breath. There's something biological that happens when we breathe through our nose and out through our mouth. And then we might say some sort of like confession of trust. In the Bible, confession is negative and positive. Mm. So we confess our sins, but we also confess Jesus as Lord. And so confession is simply articulating. Psalm 32 says that I was crushed by the weight of this life until I confessed to you, my iniquities, and then your hand upheld me. And so I think we need to say what's bothering us and we need to take a breath, say it, articulate it. And then what we do is we come into the presence of the Lord in a short time, 30 seconds, 90 seconds, whatever you've got in between engagements or in between shopping trips or in between errands. And you come to the Lord in a simple confession of trust. Have you ever made a commitment and then thought, oh man, now I have to actually do it. Yes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you don't have peace, you need to confess trust even before you do trust. Psalm 56 says, whom shall I fear? I shall trust in the Lord. Mm. And so he's combating fear with trust. He's confessing trust and then going, oh, shoot, now I've got to actually trust. And so sometimes <laughs> right, right. We, we will hold ourselves to what we have said. Yes. But until we say it, we won't do it. And so there's these kind of learning these scripts of like trust, almost like a child. You know, when you raise your child, you, you might say things like, say yes, mom. Say yes, dad. And it's only when they say that, that they then obey. And sometimes we need to say things in order to coach our own hearts into trusting the Lord in the midst of a lack of peace. Amazing. What a beautiful conversation. Thank you both for being here. Pick up a copy of I Pray You Pray by Riley Taylor. Riley and Brittany, thank you for coming by. Thanks so much, Erica, for having us. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family.